Taylor Swift, Drake, Billie Eilish, and Beyonce are among a long list of popular artists who not only rule the charts, but rule the minds of everyone all over the world, from the youngest to the oldest person. Maybe ruling our minds is a bit of an exaggeration. Or is it? Whether you are a Christian or not, I believe this video will be valuable to you. But before I get into the music, I want to say that this is not a video to condemn you or any of these artists. The goal of this video is to bring awareness to and a warning of the dark undertones of mainstream music. Is it safe for a Christian to listen to music that clearly goes against God's teachings for the sake of entertainment? By the end of this video, you should be able to answer your own question. Let's get into it. The first question you should ask yourself, is it productive to listen to worldly music? I want to pull up 1 Corinthians 10.23. It says, You say, I am allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. You say, I am allowed to do anything, but not everything is beneficial. And as I read through some of the lyrics of these artists, which I'm going to pull up in a minute, you'll see that the things that they're singing or rapping about is not productive for us as believers to listen to. If Jesus preaches against sexual immorality, it is not productive to then listen to a song which promotes sexual immorality. I'll get into that a little later too. I have a personal testimony about that. The next question you should ask yourself is, would God be offended by what you're listening to? Another verse, 1 Corinthians 10.31 says, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. What does that mean to do something unto the glory of God? That means that whatever you're doing, you should have God in mind, putting him first. So if God was next to you, which he is, if he was next to you, watching everything that you're watching, listening to everything that you're listening to, would he be pleased? Would he be offended? Because a lot of us wouldn't do a lot of things if we can physically see Jesus with our eyes. Just because we can't see him doesn't mean he don't see us. God is everywhere. He sees all things. So you can't hide from him no matter how many doors are closed, no matter how many lights are turned off. You cannot hide from God. He sees everything. The first artist I want to bring up is Beyonce. These are some lyrics from her song, Black Parade. Ankh charm on gold chains with my ocean energy. Now, I'm not going to get into the, the, the Ankh charm. You know, depending on who you ask, it means different things. I stay away from it altogether. But what I want to talk about is the ocean energy. Do y'all know who Ocean is? Ocean is an African goddess of water, purity, fertility, love, and sensuality. Well, now you might be thinking to yourself, oh, that sounds good. I like all those things. I like love and fertility and purity. I like all that. I want to pull up a verse, Isaiah 45 and 5. This is God speaking. He says, I am the Lord. There is no other God. Okay, so if Beyonce is essentially pledging allegiance to this ocean God, and then you have God in Isaiah saying there is no other God, that means that Beyonce is referencing a false God. There is no such God as ocean. Now, are there real spirits and power behind that, that God? Yes. That goddess? Yes. Demons. Because when you're worshiping a false god or false idol, there is something actually behind that. It's just not what you think it is. It's not what they're putting on the front. Any god who is not Yahweh, who is not Jesus, Jehovah Jireh, is a demon. So God would not be pleased with you listening to this song where Beyonce is praising a false god. Jesus offers love. Jesus offers fertility. Jesus offers purity. You need, you just go to Jesus. Why are you going to this ocean guy? Okay. And by the way, Kehlani follows the same thing. So if you listen to Kehlani, beware. The next artist I want to pull up is Drake. Here's some lyrics from his song, How About Now? He says, I ain't even Christian. I still went to church that year. 
talking about a girl. So he's, he's telling the girl, look, I'm not even Christian. I was just going to church because I was, you know, I was trying to get with you or whatever. I just, you know, I was just trying to respect your, your, your beliefs or whatever, blah. He's denouncing Christ. He said, I'm not a Christian. A Christian means to believe in Christ. So already he's telling you he doesn't believe in Jesus. So it makes other songs make more sense. In one dance, he says, higher powers taking a hold on me. Okay, so he already in the first song said that he don't believe in Jesus. So who is this higher power, Drake? It's not Jesus. And if, if it's anything other than him, it's a false God. Here's some lyrics from his song, Sneaking. This is all God's doing, man, you can't plan it. But if the devil's in the details, then I'm satanic. So right here, Drake is basically saying, look, God got his hands on everything. But if the devil won't get involved, I got to get to where I got to get. I got to get the bag. I got to get the women. I got to get like whatever he got to do. Whoever he has to go to, Yahweh or Satan or whoever, he's going to get to him. And that's like, bro, you can't you can't play the field like that. Either you with God or you with Satan. Jesus said, either you are with me or against me. There is no middle ground. No such thing as being on the fence. You know, people say stuff like, oh, well, I'm not going to follow God or the devil. I'm going to just do my own thing. There is no such thing. There's only two kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world, a.k.a. Satan's kingdom. Because remember, when Satan tempted Jesus in the garden or in the wilderness, Satan offered Jesus the world. He said, if you bow down to me, I'll give you all this, Jesus. Jesus didn't say, you can't do that. You don't have ownership over the world. You can't do that. No, he, Satan can do that. That's why you got so many artists, actors, whoever on these high levels that don't worship the one true living God. Because Satan gave them everything they wanted. Satan will give you everything you want right now. God will make you wait because he wants to build you up to be able to handle that blessing. But the devil will just give it to you. Just give it to you because he wants to destroy you anyway. The next artist I want to pull up is Michael Jackson. Here's uh, lyrics from his song, Blame It On The Boogie. Well, the Jackson song, but he sings this part. This magic music grooves me. Okay, magic, sorcery. That dirty rhythm fools me. The devil's gotten to me through this dance. Now you might be thinking to yourself, oh, it's a metaphor. Or I've seen some people say, he didn't even write this song. Or Look, if somebody wrote this song and gave it to me, I'm not singing it because I'm not singing about no devil. I'm not singing about no magic. So it's not like nobody forced Michael to sing this song. That means he was coming into agreement. Whether he actually believes that or not, he's coming into agreement. You don't have to believe in the words that come out of your mouth words have power good or bad oh man i ain't mean it like that but i ain't mean it like okay but you said it and you spoke it into existence it's real taylor swift i believe that i forgot to put the song title here but i believe it's from uh welcome to new york she says and you can want who you want boys and boys and girls and girls need i say more you already know how god feels about living that kind of lifestyle. And by the way, there's a misconception about people who live that lifestyle. You are not automatically condemned to hell for how you feel, by the way, guys. I feel like doing things I shouldn't do. Other people feel like, we all feel like doing things we shouldn't do, but just because we feel them doesn't mean we should follow through on the action. Because for some reason, believers make that community feel like they're the lowest of the low. Like, no, we all have a desire to sin. But it's turning away from that sin and following Jesus and finding our identity in him, which makes us full and whole. Billie Eilish, from her song, All Good Girls Go to Hell. That already alone is enough. But if that's not enough for you, let's get into the lyrics. My Lucifer is lonely. Okay, so she's claiming Lucifer and she's saying he's lonely. All the good girls go to hell because even God herself has enemies. My Lucifer is lonely. So now she's referring to God as a woman, just like Ariana Grande did. There's nothing left to save now. My God, lowercase g, is going to owe me. There's nothing left to save now. And the reason why I say lowercase g is because that's important. In the Bible, any God who is not Jesus, who is not Yahweh, who is not the creator, is referenced with a lowercase g. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says, Satan 
who is the God, lowercase g, of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God, uppercase g. See? So that's important. Three more artists and songs I want to name. I'm not going to even go through the lyrics because by the titles alone, you can tell what it is. Sam Smith, Unholy. I mean, that's enough. Doja Cat, Demons. And when you look at the music video, <laughs> that's enough. Sabrina Carpenter, Feather music video. In this music video, she's dancing provocatively in a church. Literally in front of Jesus. I mean, Jesus is everywhere, but you know what I'm saying. In front of Jesus, dancing like a harlot in front of, like, guys, if this ain't blasphemous, I don't know what it is. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, you know, Cameron, I understand what you're saying. You know, I don't agree with what all these people are talking about, but uh, it's just music, bro. Like, why are you tripping? I'll give you a personal testimony. If y'all don't know, before I came to Christ, I used to do music reviews, music reactions. You can go find it. It's literally this year that I was doing them. I just came to Christ this year. Go back. Go to my channel right now and look at my most popular videos. It's music reactions. And as I was starting to kind of get away from it, you know, in, in search of God, my subscribers requested that I listen to a Janet Jackson album. I forgot which album. I'll pull it up. At this point in my walk with, with God, I was two weeks clean from porn. I had a porn addiction since I was like 12, which a lot of us have, and God freed me. So I was about two weeks free and clean, and I listened to this album. And I knew that Janet was, you know, she had a little bit of promiscuity or whatever, but it was never nothing too crazy that I've heard. But this album was ridiculous. Like I'm talking about, it was like audio porn. Like it was wild. So I get through listening to this album. I get off, you know, the live stream. And I literally felt like all of the strength that I had to resist temptation was pulled from me. Like I didn't feel the pulling, but I knew that it was gone. And I knew that I was on my own. I knew that God had given me up to my reprobate mind. And that night, I fell into temptation. I fell short. And after that night, I realized how powerful music really is. How powerful movies really are, shows. What you indulge in, when you open the door for the devil, you can't fight that. See, it's different when temptation comes your way. You can resist. But when you open the door for it, you give legal right to the enemy. If you don't believe me, I want you to listen to this testimony. Um, shout out to Delafay Testimonies. They have this a great channel. I want to pull up with this guy. He said he used to be a rapper. And while he was at the venue, God told him after he got off the stage to go sit down and watch the next performer and look at what he says. I was doing a performance with a well-known rapper and I had to open up and it was my turn to get on stage and I got on stage, I did my thing. When I came down, a voice began to speak to me and said, I need you to go to the back. And I didn't understand why I was hearing this voice, but I went to the back of the, the club that we was in, where we was performing. I sat there and it said, watch. I just heard a word, voice said, watch. And I started to look and this rapper started rapping and doing what he do, but my eyes opened and not to be super deep or super spiritual, but it really happened. My eyes opened to the spirit realm where I saw these shadows it was like dark shadows coming out of his mouth through every word that he was doing saying and go into the people and i started to see how people started changing like they started getting more violent the girls started getting more seductive and all of this and next thing you know gunshots just started to happen in the club i run out and i'm just bawling and crying i'm like this is what you wanted me to see that day was the day that i said that music is i'm done because if I can make music that can affect a generation like that, cause them to, to go in a different direction, to spark up violence, to spark up fornication, I don't want any part of that God. And so the Lord said the same, um, he said the same spirits that torment you while you're making your music will torment others. That was the turning point. I don't want to do that. 
I want to be a person that's going to affect the generation that causes them to run towards God, live a pure life, happy life, full of joy life, not a life that comes with consequences. And when you see the effects that the other music have on the lives of a generation, it will cause you to change. And I pray that God will open your eyes to see that. So as you can see, a lot of things are going on in the spiritual world that we're not aware of because all we see is the physical. Some people have the gift to see in the spiritual, just like my brother I just pulled up. My brother in Christ, not my real brother. And God allowed him to see that to let him know how serious it is. So those people on stage, I mean, those people in the crowd might not have directly been affected by what he was saying as far as if he was rapping about shooting somebody, it didn't make them want to go shoot somebody. But now they're in that atmosphere and people were affected. People did start shooting. So just because it might not affect you that way doesn't mean it won't affect people around you or your atmosphere. And like he said in the video, it made people more violent. It made people more sexual. Like it, when you invite this music into you, it does things to you, even if it's not exactly what the person is saying in the song. You're going to invite something. I just want to remind all of you that this is not a condemnation video. I'm not condemning you or these artists because, like I said, I used to do this. I used to do music reactions. I was listening to all this Taylor Swift, Billie Eilish, My Chemical Romance, Drake, Trippy Red, Lil Uzi. I was right with you. And I also don't believe that everyone mentioned in this video knowingly worships Satan. Neither do I believe that they don't. So I'm not going to sit here and say that they do, but I'm not going to say that they don't. <laughs> That's between them and God. The point is to expose the root of darkness, which is linked to the devil. Many people knowingly and unknowingly pledge their allegiance to him every day. Luke 11, 23 says, anyone who isn't with me opposes me. And anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. So right there, Jesus is drawing a line in the sand and saying, hey, there is no, I'm not going to serve Jesus. I'm not going to serve Satan. If you don't choose Jesus, you by default choose Satan. There is no, there is no multi kingdoms. It's just two guys. And if you're anything like me, you know, you've kind of seen the darkness in music, in movies. Cause even growing up, I knew that certain songs I didn't want to listen to. Like it was too much even for me. But here's the truth, guys. We've all have done things that God would not be pleased of. We've all have sinned. All the way back to Adam and Eve, who kicked it all off, at least for humans, because, you know, Lucifer was the one who really kicked it all off. But for humans, it was Adam and Eve. And we all would have done what they did because we all have done what they did in a different way. We disobeyed God because we didn't have a full revelation of what we were doing was wrong. We didn't understand the full consequences of what we were doing. But the good news is, although you have sinned, Although you deserve to be punished for your crimes against God. God loves us so much that he came down, became his own creation. So that we may be saved. He came down, lived the life that we couldn't live in perfection. He was sinless and he died the death that we should have died. We all deserve to be on that cross getting crucified. We all deserve to be in hell. But Jesus said, you know what? I got this. I'm going down there. I'm going to save my children because they can't save themselves. They're, they're too wicked. But I, who am holy and righteous, will come down and take their punishment for them so that they can live with me for eternity and they can be my children. They can be my friends, my people. So now when you read John 3.16, it hits a little different. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. He loves us so much that he came down and paid the fine for our penalties. That's why we have to change. We have to repent. We have to turn away from sin because it was because of sin that he had to go up on that cross. I like to give this, this analogy. If I commit a crime right now and the police come investigate me and I'm about to get arrested, but then my homeboy comes in and says, you know what, Cam, I know you did it, but I don't want to see you. I don't want to see you go to jail. I'm gonna take the lick for you. I'm gonna go sit in there. You can be like, "Dang, bro, I appreciate you. You ain't, you ain't gotta do that, bro. You real. You 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 a hundred, bro." So now your friend goes to prison for you, and you decide. You know what? 
I'm going to go commit more crimes. What? Your friend going to be looking at you like, bro, I didn't took this charge for you. And you're going to go back and do the same thing that put me here. That's how Jesus is looking at us. The reason he is on that cross is because of you. It's because of me. It's because of us. So how dare we continue to live in sin? How can you continue to be an alcoholic, to watch porn, to smoke weed, to fornicate, have sex before marriage, to indulge in a LGBTQ lifestyle, to do anything that God does not approve of because he was on that cross because of all of those things. His blood washes us and cleanses us of our sins, but it also frees us from our sins. Because the Bible says you are a slave to whatever you choose to obey. So either you can be a slave to sin or a slave to righteousness by following Jesus. I want everybody on the other side of the screen to close your eyes. I pray that you know, the Lord leads some, some of the celebrities mentioned in this video to actually you know, you know, watch it. But for those of you who still have an attachment to this artist, I'm right with you. I used to love Drake, love Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson was like an idol to me. So I'm right with you. So I want, I want to say a prayer right quick. Lord, I pray that you have opened the eyes and opened the minds and hearts and ears of everybody on the other side of the screen. I pray that you penetrate their hearts. I pray that you convict them. I pray that you show them why that is wrong to listen to this. Not because you're trying to be religious or you're trying to be controlling or a dictator. No, show them that there are ramifications for listening to this kind of music. Show them that they invite demonic presences when they listen to this music. That's why some of y'all got sleep paralysis. That's why some of y'all, you can't give up the porn. You can't give up the weed. You feel like you got to do it. You can't give up the pills. You, you feel like you have to have it to function. You don't need those things. You need Jesus. Jesus is a restorer and a healer. And I pray right now that everybody on the other side of the screen is healed and restored. And if you're still not sure about Jesus, maybe you believe in God. Maybe you're like me. Maybe you believe in God, but you're just not sure about Jesus. I'll tell you what, man. When I really searched for him with my whole heart, desiring to know who he was, he revealed himself to me. And I knew that the words I was reading off that page was true. When I was reading about his crucifixion, what he went through, it pierced my heart and I knew it was true. I'm not talking about emotions. Yes, it's an emotional experience, but I'm talking about a deep spiritual knowing. Today, everybody wants to be spiritual. You know, so they go to new age, witchcraft, whatever it might be. But who's more spiritual than the Holy Spirit? The original spirit. I just pray that everybody receives this message. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I have an entire playlist on me exposing music, and I have a playlist on me exposing TV shows and movies. That playlist is not that full yet, but the reason I do this is to just expose darkness. Because it was the darkness that led me to the light. It was noticing all the demonic music videos. Pay attention from now on. Look how demonic these music videos are. Look how just wicked these lyrics are. Pay attention. Look how lust is promoted. Lust is the craziest thing that's promoted right now. Just like I mentioned, Sabrina Carpenter, Doja Cat, Sam Smith, Kim Petrus, Tate McRae. Like lust is on an extreme high right now. And it's not just the women. Like I named Sam Smith. A lot of guys are promoting it too. The Weeknd, all he sings about, not all, but he sings about lust a lot. It's really a lot, man. So just pay attention. And I pray that Jesus enters your heart when you truly seek him. All right.